Living with AIDS in this country is like living in the twilight zone. Living with AIDS is like living through a war which is happening only for those people who happen to be in the trenches. Every time a shell explodes, you look around and you discover that you've lost more of your friends. But nobody else notices. It isn't happening to them. They're walking the streets as though we weren't living through some sort of nightmare. And only you can hear the screams of the people who are dying and their cries for help. No one else seems to be noticing. And it's worse than a war. Because during a war, people are united in a shared experience. This war has not united us, it's divided us. It's separated those of us with AIDS and those of us who fight for people with AIDS from the rest of the population. Two and a half years ago, I picked up Life magazine and I read an editorial which said, it's time to pay attention because this disease is now beginning to strike the rest of us. It was as if I wasn't the one holding the magazine in my hand. And since then, nothing has changed to alter the perception that AIDS is not happening to the real people in this country. It's not happening to us in the United States, it's happening to them. To the disposable populations of fags and junkies who deserve what they get. Don't believe the lie that the gay community has done its job and done it well and educated its people. The gay community and IV drug users are not all politicized people living in New York and San Francisco. Members of minority populations, including so-called sophisticated gay men, are abysmally ignorant about AIDS. If it is true that gay men and IV drug users are the populations at risk for this disease, then we have a right to demand that education and prevention be targeted specifically to these people, and it is not happening. We are being allowed to die while low-risk populations are being panicked, not educated, panicked, into believing that we deserve to die. Why are we here together today? We're here because it is happening to us. And we do give a shit. And if there were more of us and less of them, AIDS wouldn't be what it is at this moment in history. It's more than just a disease which ignorant people have turned into an excuse to exercise the bigotry they have always felt. It is more than a horror story exploited by the tabloids. AIDS is really a test of us as a people. When future generations ask what we did in this crisis, we're gonna have to tell them that we were out here today. And we have to leave a legacy to those generations of people who will come after us. Someday the AIDS crisis will be over. Remember that. Right on. Right. And when that day comes, when that day has come and gone, there will be people alive on this earth, gay people and straight people, men and women, black and white, who will hear the story that once there was a terrible disease in this country and all over the world, and that a brave group of people stood up and fought, and in some cases gave their lives so that other people might live and be free. So I'm proud to be with my friends today and the people I love, because I think you're all heroes, and I'm glad to be part of this fight. But to borrow a phrase from Michael Callan's song, all we have is love right now. What we don't have is time. In a lot of ways, AIDS activists are like those doctors out there. They're so busy putting out fires and taking care of people on respirators that they don't have the time to take care of all the sick people. We're so busy putting out fires right now that we don't have the time to talk to each other and strategize and plan for the next wave and the next day and the next month and the next week and the next year. And we're gonna have to find the time to do that in the next few months. We have to commit ourselves to doing that. And then after we kick the shit out of this disease, we're all gonna be alive to kick the shit out of this system so that this never happens again.